And we are live. Man, somebody should make this into a gift. Look. Anyway, what I was telling you guys before before we went live, I uh, am on a ketogenic diet. I'm loving it. Something I have every morning is something called Bulletproof Coffee. It's black coffee brewed with 100% uh, real butter and coconut oil. You can use like a erythritol as a sweetener, but it's really, really good, very fattening. And it's almost like having a meal early in the morning. But what a lot of people don't know about Bulletproof Coffee is that one of the ingredients can also be used for other things. Coconut oil is one of the most amazing sexual lubricants I've ever seen. Ah, and good to you know. use, it, it's true. <laughs> and if you use enough of it, if an accident happens, she usually won't even know. And so that's a little tip for you uh, when you go out on your date tonight, Robbie. Welcome, everyone, to Beastly Thoughts Live. Thank you. You episode. pull out so quick, man. Everything's good. Yeah. She's happy. You're happy. No, she just uh, looks at you like no complications afterwards. You know, it's, it all works out. And, I mean, if you see her, you know, double over and walk out of the room, you'll feel proud of yourself. I did that. Welcome to Good Basic you. Thoughts Live, everyone. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> so, uh, so bring good. back the old intros. A gaming podcast. A gaming podcast. Gaming podcast. Hey, man. Yeah, we got to <laughs> emphasize that. Tw look, Twister's a game. That's uh, true. That is right. true. And, and and don't tell me you guys have never had fun playing Twister. Things get put in inconspicuous places. Body You're parts on top of body yeah. parts. Man. You're trying to navigate yeah, yeah. the terrain, and all of a sudden you see mounds in front of you. It's the greatest game in the world. Besides Gwent. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We've been really excited to get back with you guys and talk about video games with our weekly podcast, BC Thoughts Live. We are now in episode eight, and it feels great. Uh, we got a little change of perspective here. Last week, uh, Mr. Not Too Nerdy showed everyone his amazing background. So I decided I was going to just turn my monitor. Beautiful. Hi, <laughs> it's great. Oh, poor Robbie said, he said, Beastly. You're in a new room. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Like, How are oh, you guys cool. doing this week, man? I've been looking forward to talking to you guys and uh, getting together and, and, and kind of looking through our chat to see what people are talking about. What have you guys been up for the, uh, up to for the last week? Life. Well, uh, That's really yeah. it. <laughs> Pretty much life. Going Everybody? We're, no, all, I, we're all adults? I, I've been like playing that. Dead Cells. I play a little bit of Dead Cells. And that, that game is, you know, I, I have a lot good? of fun with it. It's good. It's a little. It's a little challenging, which I like. So I didn't realize it. Like certain feet, certain things are. I'm not gonna say cryptic, but it's certain things you have to figure out. Like once you die once, like okay, I can't do that again. And then you start from the beginning, and you don't have the weapons that you gain as you went through. And I maybe I missed something throughout it, but I guess it's procedural or it Is just it? It, it? It, like what happened. It's like. I don't know because like every time I die, it looks it different? completely different, and I'm like, damn it, dude! Like and like, I didn't know this going into it. So like, when you die, like I saw there's like sort of like this spot where you come back to life, and there's like all these jars are filled up with different things, and mm -hmm. I saw the weapons I did gain were in those jars, jars, and I couldn't use them again. I had to go back, and when I went back into the world, it looked different from what it was before. So I'm like, wait, what the hell is going on? I thought this is supposed to be a pretty straightforward game, and it's not. So I, I don't know exactly. I only played for like maybe about 40 minutes. Uh, I went I went past one section, and the next section is where I died, but it looked like I went back to begin afterwards. It's kind of weird, so I want to look into it more. So I was kind of hoping one of you guys played already so you could no, describe to me. It. I, I uh, hadn't. Uh, it's one that I've been looking at. I actually bought quite a few games uh, this week on my Switch that I haven't even really played. Dead Cells is one of them, but I was going to try to wait till I got maybe a deal price. Mm -hmm. uh, that game is definitely on my radar as a fan of Castlevania and Metroid, or as they say, Metroidvania, Metroidvania. type of gaming gaming experiences. Um, so it's definitely one for me to look out for. Uh, there's other games that are in the same vein that I haven't tried that I feel, quite frankly. Uh, depressed that I haven't. I've never even played Shovel Knight. Uh, oh, not even either. once. Heard such yeah. good things about and that so, game. So, I mean, I feel like if I were to, to go down that rabbit hole, I'd have to go in order. I know that a lot of people are excited about Dead Cells mm -hmm. and talking about, especially with the whole IGN fiasco and this mm -hmm. guy plagiarizing ba basically all his reviews. Oof. So it'll definitely be one I get around to. I'm, I'm intrigued at the fact that you said it's difficult. I like the difficulty. Sometimes these kind of games can catch you off guard with how hard they can be. Ori in the Blind Forest on the Xbox, which was actually the reason I bought my Xbox, um, 
that game, I thought it was going to be, you know, la, 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 la. No, it's hard as hell. And yeah, uh, no. it has a lot of the backtracking and, and things that you expect in a Castlevania-style experience. Uh, and you said you've only played for 40 minutes, so I can't really, uh, you know, get too much information out of you about it. What are you playing it on, PC? Uh, PS4. Yes, and right. and it's also not when I say difficult, I just mean it's, it's it's a little challenging in parts, you know what I mean? But like as I went on, like the the part that I died in the beginning was sort of a cheap shot. I didn't know what one of the, the enemies could do. And once I saw mm-hmm. that, you learn the pattern the next time I didn't die from it. So it's like one of those games you sort of learn the patterns and learn what you can and cannot do. Um uh, that that's pretty much like that. So it's not like hard yet. Like trial um, and error just, sort of thing like that? Yeah. Okay. I was just more shocked when I died. What happened? I'm still like, wait a second. Like, you go back from the beginning, and it's sort of like, you know, a like Metroid. Like, when you're – the map isn't complete yet, right? And as you move on, the map gets larger and larger, and you it doesn't mm-hmm. show you the whole map, right? So when I died, it went back to the beginning where the map wasn't shown again. And, like, as you went on around again, it's, like, different and stuff like you that. Get, so I, so I need it. Yeah. It's like a Castlevania uh, castle. You can go in different directions, and oh, I yeah. guess as you get to where you can't progress any further, you need to upgrade and get new skills and, and things of that nature. They, they, yeah, they they call it the what, Metrovania or whatever. That's mm-hmm. because it's a combination of Metroid and Castlevania. Like, that's the style that it does. But I don't know. I, I don't think you would need to play Shovel Knight, I mean, before you do this. I know you're saying it's, they're completely two different games. Like, Shovel Knight's way more about patterns and like the the way you have to use the jump motion a lot like this one is more uh you have to use your weapons more you know like it's all about the weapons and how you use it shovel knight wasn't really like that shovel knight's about timing and like jumping and and like dodging and stuff like that so like shovel knight's completely different i mean by all means i love shovel knight so like i wouldn't say you could play that one but this yeah. one's completely like different so i'm a huge fan one. of castlevania so you 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 i guess suggest Getting Dead Cells first. Uh, I, I guess I'm not that far into it to see yet, mm-hmm. but if you talk about graphics and stuff like that, Shovel Knight looks like, like to me looks better. It looks better than this game because this game style is a little bit different. But you know, like I, I would suggest, I don't know. I, I like I said, I'm not far into it yet to tell to justice. I, I like it though. I like the way it's going right now. So we'll, we'll, I'll let you know as soon as I beat the game. So hopefully, I don't know how many hours it's going to take, but if I keep dying like I did before, I better figure out what the hell I have to do like to go back to the section before I die. So, Hector, sheesh. Yeah, I know. Quick, quick question, and this is something you don't hear talked about very much. Uh, difficult 2D games. Hmm. Uh, one, game, one game only comes to mind at this point, something from this generation or the previous, for me as far as a, a 2D game that was extremely difficult so difficult that mm-hmm. i had to actually walk away from it have you guys ever had a game that was difficult uh in maybe the blood uh the demon souls or dark souls style or anything that's difficult in the 2d realm that was kind of off-putting it was so hard because you did mention dead cells is hard i'm guessing it's not hard like a dark souls game but have you guys ever experienced anything that would kind of just put you off because of the difficulty curve Oh man, yeah. There's one game I'm trying to think of. I think it was called like Strider well, or something like that. Well, Strider, yeah, yeah, Strider, yeah. Yeah, I think it was that Price game that was kind of difficult. I don't remember for sure though. I might be thinking of something else, but yeah, no, I remember a couple sides where I was like, "Holy shit, these games are hard." Yeah, Ori I... was really tough. I remember that game. I mean, that was a fun challenge though. To me, that game didn't make me too angry. Yeah, but you're I still right. Loved it, the game. It, was, it was really, really good. Yeah. Uh, there's a game called Salt and Sanctuary. I have it on Vita and have it on PlayStation 4. Ooh, yeah, I've heard that game. And good. Uh, it's like Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. It's like Dark Souls or Demon Souls. They've somehow transmuted that style of play into a 2D side scroller. And uh, it's so damn hard. The timing is so meticulous and the enemies are so unforgiving. And it's just as hard to play with somebody in, in a 2D world as it is in a 3D world because you got to jump through all kinds of hoops and grab chalices. And so Kate and I, we fucked around for like two hours trying to figure it out. Yeah. was unable to do it. But that game is the hardest 2D side scroll I've ever played. And that's just kind of a little side note to the news. Damn. So, all right. Let's get started with the news. And this, of course, is one that everyone's been talking about. You know, I, I talked about it with my eight-year-old right before we started the show. The Spiral Reignited Trilogy, which remasters the first three Spiral games available on PS1, has been delayed to November 13th. 
uh, from its September release date. Heartbroken. Surprising. I uh, thought this game was close <laughs> enough to where it wouldn't be delayed. That's what I was thinking. Like I was like, wasn't this game supposed to come out within like a couple weeks? I think it was within like a month. Uh, I'm definitely surprised it got delayed though. You know, I felt like that game was pretty close I to being done. I had no idea that they were even making this. Uh, you know, I'm a what? little bit older than you. I, I'm a little bit older than you, Robbie. And I, I remember when Spyro first came out. And it probably came out before you... I don't no, know. No, no, I played these games growing up, dude. Like, I'm very excited for this collection. Uh, Same and, with Crash. And so yeah. I was already, you know, I had first hair on ball when this game came out. And so Jeez. I was moving away from these type of games when it, it first started. I thought it was a pretty cool idea, kind of an open world 3D platformer with this dragon that shoots fire. Mm -hmm. But I think I played the first one, and by the time the second and third and the racing and all this stuff came around, I was I was too far removed from it. I think my kids would like it because for what it was worth, it did feel fun and played well in the PS1. Oh so God, it, it'll yeah. probably be something that I'll, I'll grab for my girls. I think my boys are probably too old. But I'm happy to see that the youngster in you, Robbie, still reminisces on the days of old. Oh, yeah. These <laughs> games are a part of my childhood, and I'm uh, very excited for this collection. It's interesting. Did you guys hear about, the, too, the fact that like the first game is the only one on disc? Like You have to download the other two as well? Oh, really? Yeah, you have to download yeah. Spyro 2 and 3. Like, even if you get the game on disc, like, two of them you have to download, which is weird, because what if you don't have internet yeah. or you don't have very good internet? That's a problem for a lot of people. Uh, only one of the games actually comes on the disc. That's kind of weird. I mean, yeah. it kind of makes sense. It's just weird that they didn't... I guess they didn't want to supply three discs. You know what I mean? Like, three different discs. But, yeah, that's but, what but it is. they could put all three of these discs. on one disc. I mean, unless they're doing yeah. like the uh, Ratchet and Clank style remaster yeah. or remake. Now, if they're remaking Spyro and it looks on that level, then I can understand it. Right. But if they're just doing a traditional, you know, higher resolution, smoothing it out, making it run at 60 frames type of experience, they should be able to get all three on a disc. Well, that's what I was surprised about it, because they fit the Crash games on one disc last year. It, may, so. it makes sense, though, because like you think about all these big games that are coming out during that time, like they have to push it back. There's, it's gonna, it's not like a huge title. I mean, it's big in the sense people remember it, but it's going to get overshadowed by like, all these games are coming out in October. And like the end yeah, of September, you know what I mean? So like it's pretty busy. So yeah. that's why it's like a Spider-Man. I mean, Spider-Man is going to pretty much take over <laughs> September. So, uh, yeah. Dude, and that's then you got that's gonna be good. October, <clears throat> you know, November, you got like all these companies are coming out, either first person shooter games, you got Red Dead Redemption 2. Like you got so many companies are coming out. That's like, bam, like it's so much big games. Oh, yeah. like, I understand why they're pushed back. I would not be surprised if they pushed it back even further. They might. I think, you know, I think that uh, they're going to just play by ear, see how, you know, they might have a good placement well, now. Well, I mean, honestly, a game like Spyro, this trilogy, uh, there, there's a, a small demographic of gamers out there that are my age or age heck who played this and are really looking forward to it. Uh, I think most of us have probably kind of moved past it. The, the, I think the audience they need to be going after now are the new, the new kids on the block, quote unquote. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, they can kind of push this back past all the triple a huge games that are going to be coming out to get out of the line of fire and release it in a tight little window where there's nothing around for a few weeks and when people go into GameStop with their seven eight ten year olds and they see it they're like oh this is cool let me snatch this up that's the demographic they need to be going after yeah 100 yeah. percent. be interesting to see how it does microsoft in their quest to have the strongest hardware with no games <laughs> is continuing oh. continuing on with their push for the best hardware a new iteration of the Xbox Elite controller is reportedly underway, known as Codename Washburn. Who came up with that name? <laughs> I don't know, some executive. <laughs> with plans to be released this October, it will cost $149 US and is likely to be revealed during the Xbox Gamescom live stream. Do you guys think we need another Elite controller? Do you guys own one? Yes, and I love the Elite Controller. Mm, I know <laughs> some people have had problems with the build quality. Uh, I haven't personally. I've had my Elite Controller for a couple of years now. Loved it. Uh, I use it quite a bit. I just love the feel of it. I love the grip, and I love the adjustable things on it. So I guess this would be taking what it a step further. What are they going to change? I, something about I'm hearing like you can adjust the thumbsticks on this new controller, uh, things like that, more adjustable hair triggers. So, yeah, other than that, like they add new grip. I'm not really too sure, but maybe they improve the paddles. Like, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, obviously, for this. I'm I like sure it's my real, Xbox though. One controllers just fine. In <clears throat> fact, I was this close to buying the uh, 
the I forget the name. It's called the Onyx, the PS4 wireless controller that looks just like the Xbox One controller. Yeah, oh. but it didn't have it. Didn't have it, it. It's official too. It's official PlayStation controller. It doesn't have a headphone jack, so that kind of irked me, and I, and I stepped away from it. Son I think the bitch. X. Yeah, bastards. Wow. I I really uh, like the Xbox One controller. I've never had a Pro or an Elite controller, so I don't know what I'm missing out on. Maybe one day I'll grab a scuff just it's so I can. Nice. It's real nice. I'm sure. I'm sure. So I'm saying at that point you might as well go right. with a scuff or something like that. Someone in, that knows what they're doing. Because here's the thing: it's not that it's bad. It's the build quality is bad. Like the parts that they use is not that great, and that's why some people have had problems with it. Not everyone. But that that's what happens when you yeah. have like bad <clears throat> build quality. Have, It'll be people some people. Have. Yeah, some people experience it. Some people won't. And that just sucks because it's not like you know scuff. Like you 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 pay for those controls. You're paying for that that build quality. You know what I mean? And that that's the difference. So like and I don't know. I don't see the point in it. Like they spend all this money on that, but like you have a nice controller and then you don't have any games to play. Like what is the purpose of the controller? That's exactly what I said, man. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I think uh, that they're they're working on it, but I think that should be the number one focus other than hard <laughs> hardware. I mean the Xbox One X, it's beyond a doubt more powerful than the PlayStation Pro. No, no question. Uh it's able to play up, I mean, not even checkerboard. Many games at 4K 30. So that's a big deal for a lot of people at home with 4K TVs. You want, you know what, though, too? This controller could be a really good go-to for use on PC. That actually makes me think of that. Like, maybe that's what they're trying to do, too. Like, yeah, they don't have that many games the on their console. Play Anywhere Initiative. Yeah, it, maybe it's... maybe You, they you really might you might be right. Great on PC. Could be a good that, controller that, for that's, that. That's another alternative to look at, heck, because uh, Microsoft is really... Uh, going balls deep into the PC ecosystem as well. Balls pushing that play balls. any yeah, the play anywhere. Remember that term tonight when you go on your date. Just don't say it out loud. Right. Right. Scuff okay. controller on a PC mind. though, it's like, <laughs> is it really gonna move quicker that you think than the mouse and keyboard? No. Well, no. It's, that's all like. That's all I'm like looking. I'm like, if that's their target, they're even worse than what they're doing right now because it's an <laughs> even smaller demographic that wants to play. Uh, a controller on a on a, a computer you know what i mean like you play that for certain games that you cannot it's really not that great to play with mouse and keyboard on a computer you know there's some games you need buttons for it or at least it's easier to hold on to the controller but if it's totally. a first person shooter or something there's no way you want to go over a, a controller over a mouse and keyboard if you're playing on pc like you're oh, I agree, to learn Hector, to but that. some people really just want to use a controller yeah. so i think actually people would be looking for i this. suck at mouse and keyboard right. i got me a nice rgb exactly keyboard and a nice well, gaming meant, yeah. mouse and it's like <sighs> but I'm those people they want to do it want they want you know they want to edge. They're, those are the people that are going to get this controller. But like the amount of people that actually do that, it's like a small, even smaller demographic. So it's like, oh, I agree. That, yeah. That's what I meant. Like it's even harder to sell that to people because like, oh, well, it's only be a small portion of people that actually do that. Right. So I, I don't know. Oh, totally. No, you're right. But yeah, it would be like a very niche audience to buy it for that. But anyways, yeah. oh yeah. More exciting news because I, unlike many people out there who are crybabies, really enjoyed Call of Duty Black Ops 4's beta. I enjoyed it. I thought that it was very, very fun. Me too. Kate and I ran around like people possessed, shooting people in the ass. It's just, it was level. a lot of fun. You, yeah, I saw that on Twitter, you bastard. <laughs> Black Ops 4's highly anticipated battle royale mode known as Blackout will have its beta starting September 10th, first on PS4. The beta will include the ability to play solo, in duos, or with squads of four people. It will use the same download client as the previous multiplayer beta, so there's no need to download the beta as long as you have it already installed on your platform of choice. That's cool. I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It only works for this one particular situation because how many games come out and they have three betas mm -hmm. and you just download... <laughs> oh, no, you didn't, Dad. No, uh, you didn't. I'll call you back, brother. I could have swore I turned this damn phone off. Beastly. Samsung! Samsung! Tough now. I'm sorry. Galaxy S9. But, um... We are not sponsored. Yeah. Sponsor us, though. I, I love that, Nintendo. It's the baby, We might be sponsored. See? Here's another Samsung phone. Oh, shit, phone. we are. Is this, <laughs> this a conspiracy? Yeah. <laughs> We're all using I, Samsung. I turned it off, and it's still on. Power off, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, I gotta put in my password to turn it off. Samsung is taking over the podcast. Jeez, but yeah, uh, this is a one-time kind of situation 
where a developer releases a beta and they have three betas on the same download. Mm -hmm. it, it's cool. It makes things easy for everybody else once you download one and play like the first beta, the second beta. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested <laughs> in seeing this Battle Royale mode, though. I think this is this could potentially change so, the game. Do they say how many people at a time yet? Has it been announced? Oh, for player count? No, uh, we don't I know. I heard that during their testing, they did 50 and 60. Yeah, apparently it's going to be around 60 players, we're thinking. I, I mean, it, look, to me, a 60-player match is fucking fine. No, because, I'm, I I mean, because, my, because, my reaction was like, is it going to work with 50? So that wasn't my reaction. I don't think oh. that's good enough. I am like, is it even going to work with 50? So that's what I meant by like that. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Battlefield had 50-player matches in uh, on PS3, didn't it? Or was it but that's the same. Battlefield had that. Like Battlefield's design is completely different from like that run and gun, fast speed of Call of Duty. That's why I'm like wondering, is this going to work? I, I'm just anxious to see what it is, what it's going to look like. Yeah. So I'm going to have to pre-order this game two more times just to make sure Amazon gives me code that freaking works. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. So I'm going to cancel another one, but I'm going to just pre-order so I can what, get what this are you, What are you going to play this on as your main, your PC? I have no idea. You gotta do a I, PC, I, Hector. Do well, a PC. I bought Call of Duty's on PC before, and like it's buggy as hell. Like I have them saved from Steam, like uh, the other PC. And, like it's good, but it just it didn't work out. Like mm -hmm. I will try it on PC. More than likely, I'm gonna waste money like I always do a Call of Duty. <laughs> but like I will try it on PS4 as well. So I'll probably gonna get it for both. Hector, PS4 I'm telling you, this is the best Call of Duty, at least from the beta. The best Call of Duty on PC, like, ever. I, like, I, it I tried it on so PC. It so good. I loved it, personally. I, I mean, yeah. because I don't do mouse and keyboard. I mean, I really very seldom, other than, like, Left 4 Dead or... Gotta it has commit. to be very gotta unique. Gotta commit, PC. Yeah. You gotta I, do it. I know, I know. But, I, you know, I don't have time, Robbie. I just don't. But um, Make I did time. play Call of Duty. Shut up, time Robbie. time for your friends. I, uh... Well, if please. you guys want to play, I'll definitely do it. Okay. Come on. There we Who go. Who that face, Robbie? I'm sorry. I... All I, all I gotta do is say yes. Don't but, make me um, emotional. <laughs> we, uh, I tried the Call of Duty on PC. It ran fine. Black Ops 4 ran amazing. But I realized at that moment just how bad I was at mouse and keyboard. I mean, that was the moment. You can get better. I look at, as, as soon as you look at someone, you're like, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the closest thing that happened to me every time I came around the corner. Oh, I, I know what you mean. Dead. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it'll probably take some dedication, a lot of time for me to, you know, bear down and do it. I think it'll happen at some point. I bought this PC so I could get into the PC ecosystem. I just haven't been actively playing with people. So, I guess yeah. time time will tell, and, and I, I, hopefully I'll get there. But, yeah, I'm you looking forward to, to that. Switch your DPI settings and stuff. Like, find something that works for you the way you move the mouse. Like, the angle you hold the mouse to. Like, you guys find yeah. everything that is it's comfortable for you. So then when you slide up the, you know... The mouse pad, everything's in the right angle, so you're aiming the gun up high and not low because you're gonna, you'll die in this game. It, how, how do I adjust that? You said do what now? Just the do what feels natural. Like honestly, you could change yeah. the speed, the DPI. Like, so you that will be the the mouse movement will be even faster. You know, so it'll be way faster than what you're used to. You want to change the setting. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is you change the angle of the way the mouse is facing. Instead of mouse faces straight up, like this. You know what I mean? You could like you could change it. Also, are you you have a big hands? Are you are you, are you a person that palms the whole thing? Are you doing fingertips on the mouse? Yeah, but are you doing fingertips on the top of the mouse, on the bottom of the mouse? Like you gotta also this angle exactly all how, that. This is exactly how I hold my mouse. Okay. okay. But you see how you're doing that right now? Click left click that. And you see how your reaction time is? Now if you slide your fingers to, to like over rotate it and slide and rotate the mouse over slightly like you'll have a different angle on position on the mouse you need like to that do some sex what is happening here yeah i just, yeah, you know, I just like... say see that right there if you rotate slightly and then you press oh down you'll God. probably have a quicker trigger <laughs> this, finger than before this is oh, way too 18 plus for this this show you see oh that my God, the way he was <laughs> circling that? that you know uh, mouse wheel <laughs> looked like a. Uh, I don't want to describe oh, what that looked like, yeah. but anyways. <laughs> now, did anyone actually clip that? Because I just made Beastly hold the mouse in a very sexual position. <laughs> God damn it! You even made him do this. He had to rub, you know, the little. <sighs> Moving little on. <laughs> Battlefield 5's Gamescom trailer has given us a small How glimpse did that of mouse the game's feel, Beastly. Say what? How'd that mouse wheel feel? Felt pretty good. Did circles around it real nice. 
That's how you get I've had, I've had lots of practice. Oh, oh Battlefield God. 5's <laughs> Gamescom trailer has given us a small glimpse of the game's upcoming Battle Royale mode uh, with the circle in the game to be a ring of fire and the mode will include vehicles such as tanks. So there's no blue wall. No, it's literally a, a wall of fire. Man, who's going to have the better battle, battle royale mode? Call of Duty or Battlefield? Because I feel like Call of Duty, it's so much more different for them versus Battlefield. Whereas Battlefield, yeah. like this is kind of similar, right? Like they already have tanks in multiplayer. They already have vehicles. Yeah, they, they already have, have a large scale. Maps. Call yeah. of Duty, it's like this is going to be way different. I mean, the reason I'm excited for Blackout is because it's going to be something so cool and different for Call of Duty. You know, like that feel, that gameplay, that Black Ops I can't wait has. to see what Hex has to say. I yeah. see Hex face. I'm going to say Battlefield is going to do it better. Just because Battlefield doesn't have to worry about the amount of people playing on the server, we'll right? We'll see how they, they execute don't have to worry about, Oh, yeah. They don't have to worry about that. They they can execute so much more because they already know? have vehicles. They have everything that they need. They could do so much more damage. You see how there's people firing up in the sky and down below before. Imagine things like this going on while... This is, you know, this is taking place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that is way, way cooler than I call it Duty. Like, I'm going to see how Call of Duty pulls it off, but I can just imagine in my head it'll be way cooler. Seriously, do you think that after all this time, you know, and the technology has existed for many, many years, that Activision would put out this game with this mode, remove, completely remove the single player campaign without the prospect that they have this technology nailed down? The technology has existed for a long time. Yeah, uh, Battlefield has they've streamlined it, made it workable even on seventh generation. But it, it's existing; it's already pre-existing tech. The fact that Activision and, and uh, Black Ops Four would go in this direction, completely omitting a single-player campaign, and you think that they would go that far with the prospect that the the infrastructure, the the online infrastructure, doesn't work? To me, that's crazy. Well, to me, that. The, the infrastructure is there. It's That's going to... to me, it's like, it's crazy. You think Activision will let someone release something where, let's say, like a game that has no story mode whatsoever, and they put, they put bits and pieces together, and still you're in year two of a game, like a, a second version of the game, and still doesn't have story? Talk yeah. about Destiny 2, by the way. And, Ooh. like, you mean to tell me that Activision <laughs> won't let things like that happen? Of course they're going to let it happen, because they make money. Like, all they have to do is say, hey, guys, we have this... We're, we have this game mode coming out. Everyone's hyped up, right? No one knows what it looks like. Doesn't mean it's going to work yet. That's why the beta is going to show if it works or not. So do I think they could do that? Absolutely, because they do not care. That's why what, what happened when they got rid of the single player mode? It saved them money. It actually saved them money because they don't have to spend money on the single player mode. They could focus on the multiplayer. Well, right. they That's did it. Say, they did say, and I, I believe Digital Foundry did as well, this is the best looking Call of Duty ever. Because they got rid of the single player mode, uh, they were able to allocate all those access, uh, uh, those assets into the physical physicality of the game and the right. way that it's presented. So, I mean, you lose some, you win some. I, I was never a big fan of that. My question for you guys is this: because I want to, who knows? Battlefield, the gunplay has always been my issue. Maybe it's too real, or maybe it's not real enough. Call of Duty has always been something I could pick up and play. Same Battlefield, for, me. Yeah. for some reason, it felt it felt different. If I shoot at someone, it seemed like my gun had tons of recoil. All kind of crazy things that were happening that kind of put me off a yeah. of Battlefield. So hopefully yeah. that gets streamlined as well. But do you guys think that Battlefield 5 will have a beta to come out around the same time as Call of Duty's beta? So that, you know, to kind of uh, slow down the fervor and get people kind of excited well, about that. They do that have a beta well? coming out, yeah, in September. Yeah. They have a beta. Ooh, both of them? Both in September? Yeah. Yes. Ooh. The only thing it's is, though. Uh, uh, like, don't don't expect any because I, just because I said I think Battlefield is going to turn out to be better to wait in this game mode. Don't get me wrong, EA is going to screw it up somehow. EA always screws the launch up of their this Battlefield game every single time. There's always glitches and everything that happens in the first the couple worst? weeks. It, it, and the game launch is broken. <clears throat> it, it's four. going to happen. <laughs> and the funny thing with EA. Like for Battlefield, if I remember correctly, every single Battlefield betas were working great. As soon as the actual game, game came out, out, they all crapped out. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So I don't expect much from them. But I'm just saying, in general, I think they're going to do better than Call of Duty in, in the game that game mode just because they already are built for that. There's not that much they have to change. Battlefield, to are they maintaining their single-player campaign? They are, right? Yes. Yes. Ooh, that's another perk. That. 
That's and a, like, that's a big perk. and free maps for Battlefield as well. And, whereas Call of Duty has they, a pass. They have more players in their yeah. their battle royale mode. That's oh. Oh. Don't forget, it's all like like Robbie just said, all free maps, like yeah. all of the maps. All that's the a big selling point. Yeah, whereas because Call of Duty's doing a blackout or uh, the uh, Black Ops pass. I couldn't think of it's it. It's thanks yeah. to the government because the government uh, scared EA with all that stuff. The loot, the loot boxes, and, and Disney. Disney, Disney called them up too with Battlefront yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. So that was wild. But like, I don't know the the thing with Call of Duty though is, I. They did change the game though, obviously too. Like the, it takes you a lot longer to kill someone. I haven't played it, but I've seen it. It does take longer to Ooh. kill someone in Call in Call of Duty. She got right that now. right, does. So that's why it actually looks like they're ripping a page from uh, or taking a page from uh, Battlefield because uh, it, it is going more towards that route where it is a little more realistic on killing people. And like I, I mentioned before to you guys, I think they did that to. For this game mode, I think they want people to get used to that in the regular game mode. So then, when you play in this other game mode, it, it makes sense. Well, one hundred percent, they raised the health to one hundred and fifty for Battle Royale. They probably yeah. did. Oh yeah. So it, it just to me though, like I, I still want to see it get done. I'm not That's why there's armor in the game too. Uh, yeah, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Which is weird though, because like the one perk is either armor or you have to defend from like you have a, a armor piercing rounds, right? So like. Yeah, you have it's to an attachment for some guns, like, not even all of them, too. Yeah, yeah, so that's why you have to, like, make a sacrifice. Like, well, most people are using either armor or armor piercing rounds, so you're wasting mm -hmm. a perk for that, which I think is so stupid that there's forcing that because then you have to waste it. Because if you don't, if you're not going to wear armor, you're going to have to get armor piercing rounds. Otherwise, you're going to die because other people are going to be, they're, you're not going to be able to kill them. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. and this is just by me watch other people play so like that's why i'm already i was you know like no why did they do that i didn't even play it yet i can only yeah. imagine what you guys felt when you're playing you probably died a lot personally because the armor that. is annoying and i think the best option for them to do for armor is leave it leave the armor just for blackout and just for heist uh you guys know like that heist mode like the csgo mode yeah. type in black ops 4 like the armor works great for that that makes sense right because you save money uh you buy the armor every round like that makes a lot of sense and for blackout of course as a pickup regular multiplayer get rid of it like personally it just doesn't need to mm. be there and the armor piecing rounds like just get rid of them both they're not going to do that unfortunately they're just gonna nerf armor which well, fine but yeah who knows maybe they're just putting in the, those game modes just to test out people using armor so to see I mean, they yeah, should use in a battle royale so you don't know yeah. what they're yeah. yeah it's a beta and they got a lot of feedback about that subject armor. to change yeah. they got a ton of feedback about the time to kill uh so you know they, they and got plenty of quick scope from what i heard like uh, I yeah. sniping at that, on pc like, is brutal they, they destroy like this is even worse <laughs> Dude, than I've ever seen call of duty <laughs> I'm looking at them like, wow, man. I, that's one thing I, I I love doing. So I'm like, yo, I could totally pull that off. Like, that's why I'm like, I would love to uh, be a, a sniper this game because you could do quick scope in the chest. And Snipers are one shot kills, whereas everything else, is, you know, the time to kill has yeah. been raised. So you really yeah. notice it. Snipers are so viable on PC. It's nuts. They're so good. Let me just say this before, before we get to the next bit of news, because, you know, Battlefield and Call of Duty, we could probably talk about it all day. You guys got to get a fucking Switch. thing is incredible. Uh, it is the last man on earth console. I mean, your last console that you can have, it should be a Switch. It's so awesome to be able to take it and, and play. Like, the new demo for uh, Monster Hunter Ultimate Generations is on the Switch. It's so fucking awesome. It, and you can play two players on it. I mean, it's, it's incredible what this console can do. But more news, we kind of hit on this last week. Diablo 3 has been officially announced for the Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. It'll include all previously released content for the game. It'll run at 60 frames per second and will be released by the end of this year. Never played it. That's super hype news for me. Very cool. Uh, Diablo's an awesome game. Being able to take it portably, very cool. This is really cool. FPS, too. Uh, the Switch, man. The Switch is a shit. It really, really is. I'm getting Night Trap. Is it Night Trap on the Switch? Remember the Sega CD game? Was it Night Trap? The one that they just remastered? Heck, I don't think it's Night the... Trap. Night no, Trap is, will be a little too much to put on the Switch. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that's a weird game. <laughs> it was a Night Trap. It was another one. I can't think of the name of it for some reason. All right, but that's exciting news. Uh, any... Have you guys considering picking up a Switch? Are you waiting for better games to come out? I'm definitely considering a Switch. Yeah, I'm kind of just waiting for enough games, which it's almost there for me, you know? And just money, because I'm young and broke. And... 
Some of us are old and broke, life. Robbie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it well. happens. It yeah. happens, bro. Exactly. You know, no, it, it, it We spend all our money on video games, heck. It's over. No, nah, I don't spend money on any video games, to be honest with you. Oh, man, you got to teach me the secrets. Teach me the art. <laughs> I mean, the same way you did with the mouse. I need to know how to get video games without spending money, heck. See, I mean, um, you just got to pet the mouse, basically, and also you'll get games out of nowhere. Just... Oh, that's it? I'm pretty yeah. good at this. All right. Pete Hines, the vice president of marketing at Bethesda Softworks, has once again spoken out against Sony's stance on crossplay with PlayStation 4 and other platforms, and even went far as far to suggest that the Elder Scrolls Legends may not be released for the PlayStation 4 at all if Sony doesn't allow crossplay with other platforms for the game. Sony, come on. Like, it's getting Do really you, bad Sony? now. Yeah, hey, look, man. it's getting really I, bad for you guys now. No, it's not getting bad for them. It's not getting bad for them. It's getting, <laughs> bad. It's getting bad for everyone else. When I mean, they it have just looks bad. That. Yeah. It, it like, doesn't, oh. dude, it doesn't, it looks so bad that they're, they're taking it to the bank. Because here's the problem, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense for them to do it. It, it no, makes no, no it's, it's no advantage for a company to do it. Oh, well, like, if you want that so bad, they're making it affordable. So what if Sony came out and dropped the price for PS4 and, and give you another opportunity to buy a PS4? They're not doing something consumer friendly. Isn't that consumer friendly as well? Because they're giving you the opportunity to play it with other people, right? Well, the, one of the bad aspects of this whole I, story is that Bethesda could die on their own sword because a huge majority of console gamers are playing on PlayStation's console. Right. And to alienate yeah. PlayStation and to alienate PlayStation gamers doing this social justice type of action or speaking out. So it's a company. They're going to handle their business the way they want to. Sony's not coming out and de- demeaning or making demands of Bethesda and telling them they need to do certain things certain ways. They're right. allowing them to handle their business and do it the way that they see it as the best profit for their business as a whole. And, for and Bethesda to come yeah. out in, in this social justice warrior type of way and say, everyone needs to hold hands. Everybody, we all got to play games together. That's not, it's not business friendly. That is a social yeah. justice kind of action. And people playing on PlayStation who don't really mess with the Xbox or Nintendo or PC, they might hear about these, you know, demands by Bethesda, and they might boycott Bethesda's next game and say, "You want to, you know, take a game away from us? Well, I'm not going to support you in the future." I think that this could be a bad precedent for Bethesda in the future, and ultimately, it won't hurt Sony at all. So, wait, what about Fallout 76? Who who's partnered? Who are they partnered with for Microsoft, that game? Xbox. So, like, you mean to tell me? The same company is partner with Microsoft anyway. It's now all of a sudden making an announcement. It's like this isn't stage whatsoever. So this got to be the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like for people to understand, it's like, yes, is it great like, if you play with your friends? Yeah. Well, is it a deal breaker? No. Because the point is you're playing the game, right? Yeah. And like just because you didn't – like you were talking about all these people that most of the people last generation have more than one console. That's the way it works. Right. As other console gets cheaper, you tend to buy that console. Now you have both consoles and you get to enjoy the games you didn't get a chance to play before. Yeah. That's what happened. Now you're talking about a console that you're you're making an exception for because they do not have as much games as a PlayStation to play. And that's the only reason why people are doing this is because think about it. You're now talking about the multi-platform games. You're like, well, we should be playing together. Why? I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Like. I, 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 I'm, no I'm kind of sorry there, but like, it, it's like, why does it have to be now? We've never done it before. Like, well, it, it should be there now. Like, it has to change now. Why? It doesn't make any sense that it's all a, of a sudden it's, it's changing now. It's a now. social justice warrior agenda. I'm sorry. People Nintendo really and, and Sega didn't, you know, have cross play. I mean, it's competition, man. If you want to play on PlayStation's console, get a PlayStation. If you want to play games through the PlayStation network, play with PlayStation. To me, it doesn't. It makes no sense for Sony to, you know, open up their their ecosystem for Nintendo and Microsoft. See. And you made a great point, Hack. The fact that Bethesda is partnered with Microsoft, that they have been partnered with Microsoft for the last couple of years, it's a huge. It's the the epitome of hypocrisy and insanity that no one's putting these two and two together. Oh, true. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, yeah, uh, it, it's really. It's like I said. It's not like it would be a bad thing they add it. But it's not a deal breaker. They don't like because well, they're in the first place. That's be. why they don't care. It, yeah. It, it, why? Winning. Why should they care? Like they're like you understand, and in most people's minds, and in most people's eyes, they they thought Sony was this close to being bankrupt, right? Yeah. PlayStation was this close to being gone out of Sony's hands. Sony might have to sold the property to someone else. It might have been True. gone. 
this this console not only save PlayStation, it saves Sony. Saves and, all uh, companies. You know, yeah. It saved them a lot. Mm-hmm. And like you're you're talking about, they're gonna they have to be smart how they spend their money. It doesn't make any sense for them to add something that doesn't benefit them whatsoever. In fact, it hurts their sales. That to actually let people go somewhere else and and play and play with a competition. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very it's very simple. If you want to play on PlayStation with your friends, your friends have to have a PlayStation. It sucks. You know what I mean? But that's no, just it the way it is. No, it doesn't. It just makes fucking sense. Yeah, it's it like, makes sense. I, I mean, I don't see people talk, saying the same thing with Steam and stuff like that when, when there's a game that's a PC-only game right now. And you're like, well, I want to play with my friends, but I don't have a PC. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, tell, call up PlayStation and be like, oh, we're going to add this game there so you can play it on PC? No. You have to get a PC to play with your friends on PC. True. Like, no, it doesn't make any sense. I wish you had a, I wish you had another mic that you could drop that you didn't care about. Heck, I mean, because you just dropped the fucking mic, and I think that needs to be on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you just said, people need to walk yeah. around, you know, Microsoft and Nintendo Damn, and, and yeah. Bethesda because uh, you just put the nail in the coffin on that whole topic. Just totally, wow. Goddamn, Patrick Patrick Solderlin is leaving EA after almost twenty years at the company, supposedly due to the increasing controversy and poor image the company has received over the years. EA has reportedly offered him a twenty million dollar severance package to get to get him to stay, but he will be replaced within the next three months. Twenty million? <laughs> and, if I remember correctly, last year when his contract was almost up to, they actually tried to give him, I believe, it was four million or something. So they gave him. He already made four four million like a year or something like that. Kotaku said. Um, yeah, well, man, I feel sorry for this guy. Like he's leaving EA. I feel sorry for everyone that a for a guy that's making four million dollars a year or more um, is leaving. Man, I know, right? Holy First world shit. problems, man. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could get paid an extra twenty million dollars to stay at a company. Like you know, it's pretty insane. Yeah. I mean, it was there any? Uh, I mean, it, did he take the loot boxes with him, or the, what, what exactly? <laughs> we don't know. What exactly? <laughs> okay, so this next bit of news is actually pretty startling. It could make huge reverberations through the gaming uh, community, especially in Santa Monica. So, uh, Microsoft's new open first-party studio, The Initiative, has hired some key talent from a number of high-profile development studios, including folks from Rockstar Games, Sony Santa Monica, and Crystal Dynamics. That's some talent right there. Ooh. Smart Microsoft. They're, they're Microsoft serious about getting these about studios, them right man. there in the heart of Santa Monica, opening up a new place for people who might be disenfranchised with the companies they're working at and go to a place where they can just let their uh, uh, imaginations and talents breathe. And they're like, oh, okay, I could go work at Microsoft, this new studio, bring my talent over. Oh, man, the initiative. Yeah. Fucking smart. Getting talented that people was, from different studios that, was that have done. the smartest move. Out of E3 for Microsoft, in my opinion, was these new studios. Yeah. But this one here, strategically placed in the heart of Santa Monica. Uh, isn't Naughty Dog there as well? Yes. Yeah. And, and Tons of different so game studios. So Rockstar there? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. These people are so talented. They're going to be scalping a lot of these people. I'm like, sure that they're probably already out there headhunting right now, trying to get some of the best talent from these studios. Yeah. Key people. Mm-hmm. Talented people. And the fact that they're diverse too, you know, they have different portfolios of things they've worked on. Like this, it's a pretty smart move. Like the the first party push that your boy Phil's been making in Microsoft. Like it's it's pretty damn cool, and I'm pretty psyched about this. It's it's pretty big that they're getting this good of talent for these studios. Big bald Bethesda says, <laughs> because they got big balls to tell Sony what to do. Big Bethesda balls. has stated this week that some of its upcoming releases, such as Doom Eternal, could still be released on Steam, despite Fallout 76 releasing exclusively for Bethesda.net. The company is undecided on releasing future titles on Steam at this time. What do you guys think, good or bad? Well, I think hmm. that's personally bad. That's not fair that you can't release something on Steam. Why, why, why can't I enjoy something off Steam? I mean, is that what they just said about yeah, PlayStation? Yeah, it's called so like, hypocrisy, I mean, man. That, why, can I, why can I experience it just because I have Steam? You're segregating me, a person that likes Steam. That's not cool, but that's, uh, I'm pissed off. All right, you're, you're guys, you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just said everything right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
kind of unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's really funny that no one, there's no pundits, there's no 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 one in the gaming community who's, who are drawing those parallels. Uh, we we deal, we have a, a contract with Microsoft. We want <laughs> to play with PlayStation gamers. We don't want our games to be on Steam. You know why, right? Because it's about um, money. Because yeah, they want to make the most amount of money they can. So they're trying to say, wait, why should Steam? Why should people be able to get this game on Steam when they could come to us and purchase the game since we're the ones that created the game? This is our game. And we, want we don't have stuff. to get a cut of our profits to Steam either when oh, it's our own platform. That, oh, that's it's crazy. about the money. Hey, wow. look at that. Tur turns out that Bethesda is a business after all. <laughs> They're a company that's looking to make money. Who knew? I, 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 I'm going to be first. on Twitter after we, get, after we get done with the show. I'm going to be on Twitter. Uh, let, let Bethesda know that uh, they've been exposed. <laughs> exposed. Man, that's, that's exposed. so stupid. Exposed. So this is the last topic, last bit of news that we have for this week. And it's a doozy. Because uh, I didn't know all this until now. More examples of plagiarism from ex-IGN employee Philip Mewson have been unearthed this week. Thanks to Kotaku's Jason Schreier, who Philip actually uh, call, called out on his apology uh, mm. video. He called him out and said, keep looking. You can't you find more examples of me nothing. plagiarizing. You'll find nothing. <laughs> well, Thanks to Kotaku, Jason now. Schreier. Thanks to Jason, Jason uh, Schreier and Kotaku and a number of other journalists in the games industry, his plagiarism goes far beyond just copying reviews from other sites, as he has also plagiarized information from sites such as Wikipedia, NeoGAF, and even some of his former colleagues at IGN. Yeah. He even went as far as copying his own LinkedIn resume directly from a job template website. Philip, buddy, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Hello, darkness, you screwed my up old friend. so bad, like, <laughs> this guy. Like, it, 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 it's it's something to plagiarize once, because you're running behind in a review. He plagiarized everything, Robbie. No, no, I'm, no, that's what I'm saying, though. That's what I'm leading to. It's, it's one thing to plagiarize one time, because maybe you're running out of time or whatever, or you just, for whatever reason, couldn't come up with your own review. But... Really? Like, ex-colleagues no, and your resume ripped off and, like, the thread from NeoGAF and it's, like, sources from Wikipedia. What the, what the fuck? Like, hope what? that YouTube Dude! Channel, I hope that YouTube channel does well for you, homie, because you ain't getting out of What did you expect nowhere. out of all this to happen? Yeah, you, you, like, everything's just stumble. fine? Everything's yeah. sunshine and roses? Like, hey, you know, I'm stealing other people's work. <laughs> la da 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 Everything's you know, good Guess go. what, Robbie? Somebody oh, out there man. in the industry knew what he was doing. Dude. He had to have told someone. Yeah. Someone he, so he knew someone knew that this guy was a complete and scumbag a who did no work. Eventually it was just gonna blow up and it's blown up and uh it's copy and face. paste bandit. To be honest, look, Philip, all right? If I should call you that, I don't <laughs> know if you fake your birth certificate or not. He so plagiarized like, honestly, his own I, name maybe. He stole his own. I don't even know what the hell your name whatever name. your name whatever your name is. Listen up, okay? Um there's no room for your BS right now. Like everyone has caught you red-handed. Like, I honestly think that you should at least say, I'm sorry, video, and I did this. The end. Man, he did apologize. Just, I think, one, I know you're going to get destroyed, but at least if you come out and say, I've lied about everything. I am a liar. I've done this for so long. I don't even remember when I started this. And I, and I, I got, I dug myself in too deep and I had to continue doing it over and over and over. I'm like, you had to do something like that for your own self to start for yourself, he, he and then from that, that point on, you could go. But no one's gonna never, forgive you. Oh, yeah. That would no never be a valid yeah. excuse because literally, yeah. all you have to do to review something is to experience it and write your thoughts. Basically. So, so if if you're unable to form your own opinion on something that you supposedly play, it's a much deeper psychological issue than yeah. just copying and pasting someone else's words. If you need to watch other, like he said, what's the guy's name uh, who he? He uh, stole from initials. Uh, Boomstick Gaming. Boomstick. Yeah, Boomstick. Yeah. His excuse was that he watches all forms of media when it's concerning something yeah. he's working on. I do plenty of so basic, background research. and Yeah, and, so his background research is watching other people's fucking reviews. And taking and ripping them and off. And somehow he didn't think that that was a corrupt. Yeah. Uh, he, I mean, that's letting people know you're corrupt. 
Okay. If you're reviewing something, you don't watch other people's reviews to get the consensus of which way the wind is blowing out in the ethos. You need to be able to form your own opinion whether or not that goes with the majority or not. Mm. And so he, he can say, I got so deep into this. I've been doing it for so long. I can't remember the last time I, I actually wrote my own review. And I got so deep, I just couldn't stop. That's a fucking lie. Yeah. Because all you do to stop is play a game and write about it. Okay. You know what he got used to? He got used to the easy work. He got used to the lazy work. He got, got used, used to, to the not money have, for free. Yeah, you're getting paid like, by IGN. You know, they're paying all your bills. You got a YouTube channel. Uh, everyone thinks you're a star because you're at IGN. You're plagiarizing everything you see. You know, it's giving, it's giving you credibility. People are reading your reviews and listening to what you got to say. And you're like, okay, this is super easy. All I do is switch my next victim up, steal their shit, go to a source that is not well known, steal their words, boom. I get more credit, more respect from IGN, more accolades from people who are watching IGN's content, and I continue to get paid. He got used to the easy money. He got used to the lazy work. This guy's a fucking scumbag. Yeah, totally. Do you, oh, he's do a you loser. You understand yeah, though? Hundred percent. You understand what though? A loser. His, I was cracking up. I, I literally was reading this when I was at work when I saw the fact that his resume. Now that that LinkedIn resume, if you look at how identical that is to someone else, is that like he copied almost word for word again, like for someone else. Like I'm just looking at. It, I'm like, I can't yeah, believe like, this. I yeah. here's the thing. I I've done that before. For like a cover letter, right? A cover letter, you try to do yeah, the same format. That's different because you're trying to make it sound legit. You kind of change the words around. I think a lot of people plagiarize cover letters because it's just, here's my introduction. But resume is about you, about what you did. So yeah. the fact that you have a resume He actually copied, did the resume? The, is the LinkedIn resume stuff. Like if you look at the sections of it, it's the same. as That's what I'm like looking. I'm like... I'm like, is this guy even named the same? Like, I, I want to see. Is he even a real person at this point? Or is he literally just like a robot sitting under his skin? Like, I'm like, I'm not even convinced he's a real human being. <laughs> like, this, yeah. That's pretty fucking pathetic. Uh, you know, it's one of those situations that and will live on an infamy for a long time. But here's the thing, right? It sucks in a way because IGN has been degrading and going, uh, it's been going down. For a while, you know, what I mean, if you look at it, the last couple of years, it's it's getting worse and worse. Like IGN does not look like it's going to survive much longer, and stuff like this is not Just helping them. Brain, oh, yeah. it's killing their reputation. It's not helping because they also had to go back and erase every video he did. And they're re-reviewing did. every. They're I trying did. to decide: do we have to do the review again for all the ones that were there? Like. Yeah. It is a disaster for a company to find out because it also makes them look even worse. And the they, actions they, of this one they, person they have yeah. drastically affected the outlook of their company, even though that's not their company's culture. You know what I mean? Like this one person went against everything the company stands for, but yet he represents them. And so it makes them look awful. Like they just look so bad out of this. And that sucks because... Honestly, they handled this really well. Pulling his reviews, they're going to redo all of those again. Like, honestly, I think they've handled it pretty well, but, like, it doesn't matter. Like, the damage is done. The, the thing is, that one video, the only person he did apologize to was was the creators the, yeah, the, of the that stuff. Of the game, and yeah. I tell you right now, they're loving this shit because this is making people buy their game left and right. This, oh, this is, is the is best great exposure for them. Boomstick's stuff. probably loving it too. Yeah. yeah. Dude, this is the best well, thing. For went, both he had of them. tons of new subscribers. Man. Yeah. So like, uh, it's just amazing for them. So you don't gotta say sorry to them. You got they're they're gonna say thank you to you because you freaking <laughs> your screw up helped them out so much. Like <laughs> it really did. Yeah. That's so funny. I bought it because of that. I didn't even know anything about it. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. You like, I like PS4, this. right? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm thinking of grabbing it on the Switch. It's only it's only twenty dollars. It's twenty five so, on the Switch. Yeah, maybe is at it, some point pick it up. Maybe it was it twenty five. I don't know. I think it's twenty dollars when I got it. I don't know if there's maybe a sale or something. But I'm I'm you know I'm still waiting to get into my uh, Pixel Junk Monsters two on my Switch. That's Pixel Junk Monsters one was my shit, and two I played the demo on the PS4 and I picked up the game on the Switch. Can't wait to get into that because I know it's gonna be a ton of fun. A ton. I got some other games I'm playing on the Switch right now, too. For some reason, I can't get away from Resident Evil. I keep going back to it. I beat it twice, now I'm playing it again in my spare time. But you know what they need to re release on the Switch? Just for fucking old time's sake, because you can mm -hmm. play it on your microwave, Resident Evil 4. Oh, that would be nice. If they put Resident Evil 4 on the Switch, I'm done. Sign me out. Yeah. Hey, this uh, thing, though, like, I'm looking at the Switch, right? I'm like... 
I'm wondering what are the new games that they're going to be able to play. So, like, so for example, Bethesda is putting in uh, Doom Eternal, Doom, like Doom and stuff like that, right? Mm. So, what what other stuff is going on there? We got Diablo going on there, right? So, does that mean automatically the new Diablo is going to be on there? Like Diablo that what Four, that it? is likely to be announced they, at BlizzCon too. Yeah, like, are will they that be testing there? it to to be on there? Like, are they, is is it going to be enough? To run on a Switch, I'm like really curious to see what other games can actually be played on a Switch and if how Doom far can it's run go. on it. I think Diablo will be able to run on it. It seems like Doom would be be a much, much uh, more GPU and CPU heavy experience and, yeah. than Diablo. How long before you think Nintendo is gonna update this upgrade? system? Because like they they always do like a, a another upgraded version XL, of the half step yeah. sort of 2D. yeah. And well, then they had like the new the 3DS. Handheld, for, 20, 20. For the yeah. handheld ones. And since this is a combination of one, like I assume that they out, might the, do the one, right? This came out last year, right? Yes. Um, I'd say 2020. You think they'll do a smaller screen? Like a no. small portable one? I heard that's what people wanted. Like a smaller really? screen. I'm, I'm looking at them like, yeah, I don't know if I want a smaller screen. Like, no. No, nah, they got to do a Switch XL. Or do a Switch XL. I think that would be cool. Uh, I don't think they're going to make it larger. Uh, that to me, that would be ridiculous. But um, I think that they could probably increase the GPU power to the Tegra X. Yeah. Was it X2? No, it's and, X1. And I'm saying they could increase right. it to the 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the X2 was available during the the development of the Nintendo Switch, but they still stuck with 1. And we see what that's capable of doing. If they do the 2, you will it'll be comparable to having a yeah. real Xbox One. Or I think it'll be... The oh thinner God. bezel, you think a thinner bezel will work, right? Because like that's one thing they do have a thicker bezel around it. They thin that out, it'll make the screen look like bigger. Like they don't have to change the screen size, but at yeah, least you're right. Thin the bezel out a little oh, bit, yeah. and like, make I think it, that make will it more help. More similar to the the phones and stuff like that. Yeah, but at the same time, they gotta have something because you want you want it to have wearability, you want yeah. it to have ductility, you want it to be able to. If you end up dropping it, you don't want it to fall and and be able to crack from ten different directions. You're going to want some kind of protection there. And so maybe that's why they don't thin out the bezels. Good advice for me. Good. Protection. Yeah, that's what I, <laughs> I need to know that. Uh, and yeah, and I think a good point to make as well is that as time goes on, right? Like with Doom Eternal and then future games coming out to the Switch, like games are just getting more and more advanced. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're always getting new technology. There's new game engines coming out. Like every year that a year goes on, games get more and more demanding as time goes on it's going to be harder and harder to get games to run on the switch and you know what i mean like even just ports so honestly an upgraded switch is probably a really good idea at some point what, what year robbie when do you think it'll happen yeah 2020 i'd say is a good point you know at least three years well. i think three years is because a good i time. think that's when we're going to see the ninth generation console start to be released yeah and that I would be perfect that to release a switch good. like 2020 2021 like an upgraded switch like a good upgrade uh, i think what do you think smart. heck 2019 because i feel like too I think, early. Like, no, got, no, no. I, I agree with both of you guys, but Nintendo always does something opposite what people agree with. So that's why I see I see them doing <laughs> oh. it earlier because that <laughs> the smart the smarter way will be doing mm. it 2020. Nintendo's way yeah. now. Nah, we don't do we're Nintendo. We're gonna do it a year before what you think is gonna happen. But but so, see the, the problem with that, and hopefully they got someone smart enough to realize it, the longer they wait, the better opportunity they have to have more sound technology. Going to their console. Yeah. I mean, they, they need to see what the next Tegra chip is like and potentially put something like that in there. Uh, they got to you know, be close enough in power to the PS5 and whatever the next Xbox Scarlet is. Like, they the can't next be too Switch far behind. better be. I mean, Nintendo's Nintendo, like Heck said. They're, they're, they're Nintendo, yeah. and they, they don't see the Xbox and PlayStation they never did with the Wii yeah. U anyway as direct competition yeah. because it was so far behind yeah. technologically. I think the Switch has a much better chance. Of competing, and if they, if the PS5 and the Xbox Two comes out, uh, the Switch needs to be more powerful than the consoles yeah, we they, all have. They have to make an upgrade for it. it needs to be. Mm. It needs to be 4K ready. It needs to have a much stronger GPU. Ooh, it needs 4K to 4K ready for a portable console. That would well, be. Well, nice. you know, well, the Switch is is not really a portable. I mean, I play it docked. At least the dock portion of it needs to be ready for that you think the ps4 uh ps5 and the new xbox won't be 4k ready of course they will oh, no, so no of course they will two yeah. years from now i'm so saying docked is 4k i say portable needs to be at least 1080p yeah like, because like that maybe 4k there's, docked would be possible. there's phones that are still successful like that i mean i would like to be 2k 
because that will be the resolution like the, the S9 and stuff like that. Those phones are successful. Or maybe like 1440p docked or something that, like that. That, 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 that is that is 2K. That is like the, the, the 1440p, like you said, like for, I say portable. If they could get that portable 1440p like a like a phone like S9 Plus and like mm -hmm. or an S9, sorry. Um, if you get like that, um, that's pretty much the highest pixel that you need because I, I've seen 4K and I've seen the 2K next to it 1440p. Like you really don't know so much. You can't tell because it's so small. Yeah, it's just a huge small screen. Um, but you still this stands out because OLED. But I'm just saying like if you didn't even have an AMOLED, like you really don't mm -hmm. notice the difference that much. It's really hard to tell the difference. So that's why I think 1440p is good enough to go. Um, that that would be perfect if they did that. But if it should be 4K doc, like Beastly said, because all these TVs are 4K that they're selling now, and eventually everyone's going to have 4K. In 2020, in 2020, I, I would surmise that at least 70% of the homes in America will be 4K. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's two. That's a year and a half from now. Uh, and many people have 4K TVs now. I mean, very few people I know personally don't have them. So yeah. they're, they're really becoming ubiquitous out there now. You can find them cheap, fairly cheap. You can get a 4K TV at Walmart. So, I mean. Yeah. Everything's 4K ready, too. Devices. You got, you can watch Netflix, Amazon, all those stuff, or, or Hulu. They're all 4K ready. Like, they're all 4K but, shows and 4K videos, so they're ready to go. And even if like this upgraded like, Switch isn't 4K native, like, it's got to at least support it. Like, be upscaled. Like, this is something. I would think they yeah, probably would Yeah, they'd be like a that. checkerboard style. Yeah. Uh, but it'll definitely be. I, I mean, I think if they release in 2020, uh, that the Tegra X2 will not be powerful enough to do what they need, because it'll already have been out for three years. Yeah, hopefully they, new they technology. Need, they need at that the point. next iteration of the Tegra te technology, and they need to maybe get a custom chip put in. They need yeah. something made specifically for them, and I think they won't have any issue with it now, because uh, when you think about the flounder that was the the, the Nintendo Wii U. They probably had to jump through a few hoops to get, you know, uh, a, a chip specifically made for the Switch mm -hmm. because the Wii U was such a failure. But now with the Switch selling like hotcakes and, and the momentum staying, it's, it hasn't slowed down and they're selling millions of these things. Uh, I'm sure that these chip makers will want to appease Nintendo and do something special for them and, 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 and create something powerful for them for the for the next venture. Uh, for the switch and i'll be i'll be buying that for sure because i love my switch it's, oh yeah it's fucking terrible. it really is yeah and, guys, part, and like i mean the docked to, stop selling all your consoles heck <laughs> shit I, what are you doing back. i'm getting it back what are you I'm doing back i just you know it's a you know you got to save money the way you can so i get it for a little bit sell it get it come i bring it back once i there's good games for it so Jeez, Hector. Hey, and before we, before we leave, because we're done with our news, I wanted to uh, congratulate you, Robbie. You look great, man. Uh, I told you pre-show that I could tell you you dropped some weight. You look fresh. I mean, you look like a 14-year-old last week. You're 11 now. You look so young and, and healthy. <laughs> and uh, to me, as someone who's going through that myself, uh, I know how important it is for it to be recognized. And you look amazing, man. Keep up whatever it is you're doing. You're working out. You look great. Aww, going on a date tonight. You. Smack it up. Smack it up. Um, play Pony by Genuine, okay? Or uh, play uh, Peaches and Cream, 112. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I need it because you know that I'm a fiend. Uh, Robbie ain't never heard that shit, heck. <laughs> you know. Let's do it. Do it, Robbie. Hope you have a good time tonight. Uh, and I'd like to thank everybody for hanging Certainly out with us. Time. Thanks, guys. Easy Thoughts <laughs> Live, episode 8. Uh, this is the place where I love to be. Uh, I do usually one thing a week on the internet, and uh, this is the thing. I love kicking it with my homies. You guys are my brothers from other mothers, and uh, it's it always important for me to, to connect with you guys and talk about gaming. Uh, I mean, we maybe love. we're from the same mother, and we've just never known this whole time. Possible. Hey, man, ovaries do get bleached. Any, I don't yeah, know. and anything's possible. Yeah. The same. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We love you all. Be sure to sound off in the comment section. Uh, any ideas or any criticisms of the show, things you'd like to see. Would you like me to turn the camera back toward the green screen? Uh, do you like uh, Hector's RGB lighting because he got dark? He was blue when he came. I'm blue. And then he changed it. And so now he looks <laughs> I got to fix my light. Sorry, guys. I realized I had the other light thing over here turned off, so I'll fix that for next week. <laughs> He has a, a game GameStop uh, inventory behind him back there. Yeah, look at that. You remember, we, you guys remember going into GameStop and they had like the old generation games you could actually buy? 
Yeah. You can buy PS1, PS2, yes, PS3 that stuff. that was cool. Yeah. Stop doing that. It, I'm like Blockbuster, you can rent it, but, you know, I charge you per day, so. Hmm. I'm going to be making some Blockbuster shirts, too. Uh, I'm, I'm buying a whole bunch of blue shirts. I'm putting the Blockbuster logo and at the bottom. It's going to say, I was there. It just looks so cool. I came up with the idea and did it in Photoshop yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Exciting times. Robbie, would you like to do our closing? Or did I do it? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Thank you all for watching. We love you very much. Goodbye. Well, I'll do it. I'll do it better than an intro than that. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's hardcore, Robbie. Screw you guys. You don't get a real <laughs> intro. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. We truly appreciate it this week. We, uh, If you guys do not know, if you're new to the show, this is the Beastly Thoughts Show. We do it every week, every weekend, every Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. So uh, we will be live once again next weekend. Uh, we talk about video game news. We talk about all the hot topics and all the good news and all that good stuff every coconut single weekend. Oil. And coconut oil. Uh, always use that to pull out. Very res Be responsible, children. Yourself. It's good. I mean, you can bake cookies with the shit. Yeah, it makes it's your uh, generals feel well, smooth. Anyways, well, not <laughs> not after you use it, but yeah, continue. <laughs> Nobody wants hair in their cookies, man. No, especially not the long ones, the curly ones. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Off topic. Thank you all so much for joining us, though. We'll be live again next week at the same time. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And on that note, we're out. Don't get pubic hairs in your uh, cookies. Okay. <laughs> use coconut oil, kids. <laughs> Bye guys, love you all. We'll see you next <laughs> next weekend. See you guys. <laughs> Bye.